The next law is the Safe Spaces Act or Republic Act number 11,313. The law was enacted to uphold the equality of men and women and to afford them their safe spaces. In a recent case, the Supreme Court stated that the Safe Spaces Act expands on the concept of discrimination and protects persons of diverse sexual orientation, gender identity, and or expression. It thus recognizes gender-based sexual harassment as including, among others, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist slurs. The court also stated that the Safe Spaces Act does not undo or abandon the definition of sexual harassment under the Anti-Sexual Harassment Law of 1995. This is because the gravamen of the offenses punished under the Safe Spaces Act is the act of sexually harassing a person on the basis of his or her sexual orientation, gender identity, and or expression, while that of the offense punished under the Anti-Sexual Harassment Act of 1995 is abuse of one's authority, influence, or moral ascendancy so as to enable the sexual harassment of a subordinate. Note that the concept of uh, safe spaces contemplates uh, public spaces, online platforms, as well as workplaces and educational or training institutions where persons are supposed to be protected from gender-based sexual harassment. There are several acts or aspects penalized in the law. For purposes of your labor law bar exam, we'll focus on gender-based sexual harassment in the workplace and in educational or training environments. This involves the following acts that occur in workplaces or educational or training environments. One, unwelcome sexual advances or request for sexual favors against the recipient. Two, unwelcome, unreasonable, and offensive conduct of sexual nature against the recipient. Three, unwelcome and pervasive conduct that creates an intimidating, hostile, or humiliating environment for the recipient. Who may be liable? Any person who commits an act of gender-based sexual harassment may be held liable under the Safe Spaces Act. Unlike the Anti-Sexual Harassment Act of 1995, the Safe Spaces Act does not require the existence of a superior subordinate relationship for gender-based sexual harassment in the workplace. Neither does the Safe Spaces Act require the presence of a teacher-student or tra trainer-trainee relationship for gender-based sexual harassment in educational or training environments. The Safe Spaces Act provides that gender-based sexual harassment may be committed even between peers or those committed to a superior officer by a subordinate or to a teacher by a student or to a trainer by a trainee. On obligations of employers and heads of educational or training institutions in relation to gender-based sexual harassment, they are mandated to disseminate a copy of the Safe Spaces Act to all persons in the workplace or post the same in a conspicuous place within the workplace. Provide measures to prevent gender-based sexual harassment in the workplace such as the conduct of anti-sexual harassment seminars. Create a committee on decorum and investigation to investigate and address complaints of gender-based sexual harassment and disseminate a code of conduct or policy against gender-based sexual harassment. The committee on decorum and investigation is required to adequately represent management, employees, from the supervisory rank, rank and file employees, union, school administration, trainers, instructors, professors or coaches, and students or trainees, students and parents as the case may be. 
designate a woman as its head and make certain that not less than half of its members should be women. Furthermore, the Committee on Decorum and Investigation of Educational and Training Institutions should ensure equal representation of persons of diverse sexual orientation, identity, and or expression as far as practicable. Be composed of members who shall be impartial and not connected or related to the alleged perpetrator. Investigate and decide on the complaints within 10 days or less upon receipt thereof. Observe due process. Protect the complainant from retaliation and guarantee confidentiality to the greatest extent possible. Employees and co-workers shall have the duty to refrain from committing acts of gender-based sexual harassment, discourage the conduct of gender-based sexual harassment in the workplace, provide emotional or social support to fellow employees, co-workers, colleagues, or peers who are victims of gender-based sexual harassment, and report acts of gender-based sexual harassment with, uh, witnessed in the workplace. Finally, remember also that the victim of work-related or educational or training-related gender-based sexual harassment may institute a separate and independent action for damages and other affirmative relief. 